Let's take a look at Lidl's Solar Globes because they're actually quite nice. And they do two versions. They do a warm white version and a colour changing version. Uh, the colour changing version, I've got mixed thoughts about it, but I'll show you what's inside. If you notice the background is different at the moment, it's temporary. It's just while I'm travelling because, well, you film where you can. So these things have the dome that unscrews and it's very nice that A, it's very big and also... If I take this off here, everything is integrated onto one circuit board. I'll zoom down this a little bit. And the circuit board has the actual solar panel strips on it. And they've put that white dam of silicone around the outside. And then they've put a hard resin, which covers not just up the sides of the LED, but it covers the little uh, boost converter inside here, the little control chip. Um, and if I take this out... Oh, there's also a little on-off switch. Uh, it's worth mentioning if you want to bridge that out. I think it's these two pins here that you bridge. Uh, if this switch ever gives problem because it uh, isn't protected. But if I take these screws out. And we can take a closer look at these circuit boards. If I take this out, for some odd reason, there's this big weight in the bottom. I'm not sure what that's for. Uh, I don't think it's because it's potentially a floating light because uh, if it was a floating light this would just flood and uh, it would corrode inside but it's got a socket in the bottom for a AAA cell and then the only other thing on the other side is the two tabs from the solar panel um, it's nice that everything's covered like that and well protected it could do with a little bit of extra protection but you know we can do that that's the classic thing that a bit of uh, silicone grease or Vaseline or something on the battery terminals will generally stop them corroding. Um, let's try and put that in properly. It keeps popping out in the spring. Um, can I demonstrate it lighting? Not under the... Well, I can actually. There you go. It's warm white. Now let's take a look at the other one. The other one is interesting because when I turn it on, it's got the... Boost circuitry outside here, this is where this would benefit from being covered in uh, nail varnish or something like that. But if I cover it over, you see it starts off red and then it uh, gradually morphs to blue and then it goes to green. I'm not really sure, I've not watched it going through its full sequence. If you press the button at any point in time, it locks it at that, that colour and you think, well, that's quite good because it's going to light up that colour every time. But no. Because uh, during daylight, when it goes off, when it comes back, it's going to revert back to its colour cycle. So that to, literally to get a specific colour, you have to wait till dark, unscrew the cover, and then just click the button at the desired colour. And then, uh, you know, that's what it's going to be all night. But in the morning, uh, it's just going to reset again. But uh, we'll take a look at these circuit boards and uh, kind of reverse engineer them. Because uh, they are quite nicely made. Um, I love that fact that the solar panel material is on the circuit board with uh, the resin across it. Right, so I shall look at that, noting that uh, when we take a look at the circuitry, it's going to be a different location again. That's the perils of, of uh, travel with work while we're trying to run a YouTube channel. It uh, gets quite tricky at times. But um, I shall take some pictures of these and then we can explore them one moment, please. And resume the video in a completely different location and some considerable time later. Uh, let's take a look at the module. Now, there are two versions of this. Uh, one has just the warm white and the circuitry in the middle, the warm white LED. But this version is the RGB colour changing version. I thought it would be the most interesting one. That has the boost circuitry off to the side and also this chip for controlling the LED in the middle, which is an RGB LED. Uh, the circuit board itself is quite interesting. It has that uh, silicone outer dam with the hard resin in the middle here covering the solar panel. In the case of the white one, it just has that over the little boost circuit as well. But in this one, it has the components off to the side. And they could perhaps do with some waterproofing if you particularly like this light. Um, what else is there to say here? So there's the boost circuitry. There's the diode that pumps this uh, capacitor up. There's the chip. There's the RGB LED. There's the button for ch switching off the uh, cycling mode. I think we'll go straight to the schematic. Let's bring the schematic in and check it's not completely swampy out. That's not bad. That's pretty good. 
I would zoom in closer, but uh, the camera is quite some distance from the bench here, just because of the arrangement of uh, available shelving. But let's go over the circuitry. Here is the solar panel, and it charges the, dub the AAA cell, uh, which has the switch in its negative connection, which is quite unusual. It's usually in the positive, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, but the current from the little 2-volt solar panel goes via the chip and charges that up. There's no... I don't think there's a voltage threshold. I think it just basically any available sunshine is used to charge that up. It also uses the output from this to detect when the uh, the evening has approached and that the output from the solar panel reduces and it starts driving this inductor at high frequency. The inductor, it builds up a magnetic field and then turns off and it collapses. And what that does is it adds on to the voltage of this uh, AAA cell and uh, that allows it to drive the LEDs. Now, it's worth mentioning that the Wormite version has none of this circuitry here. It just basically goes straight from the inductor through the Wormite LED shown dotted here. But the colour changing version is different. It has that shot key diode that's needed to uh, rectify it and smooth it with this uh, small capacitor here, which I've guesstimated the value at 100 nanofarad. The reason for that is that if it didn't have these, it would effectively have a slight current continually able to flow through the chip. And also, when it was running, it would be pulsing and it would potentially cause this chip to reset repeatedly. Uh, so it's got that diode for that and the capacitor for that. That then provides this mystery chip with supply. Uh, the mystery chip has one uh, button input just pulling to the zero volt rail and it drives the three LEDs directly. They're all referenced to the positive rail at one end and the red LED has a 10 ohm resistor. A couple of reasons for that. It's to uh, ensure that its voltage doesn't uh, vary too much from the other ones because uh, the red LED typically has a lower voltage, and by adding the resistor, you get a slight voltage across that resistor. It's a very sort of rough way of doing it. It does rely on a specific current to get a rough match, but it means that the red will match the other colours. It's not going to be the dominant colour that sinks most of the current and pulls the voltage rail down. Um, that will also ensure that uh, when it's purely red, that there's a slightly higher voltage across this rail, which keeps the chip happier with the sort of with its air. Uh, slight higher voltage in the two typical two volts you'd find across a red and that is more or less it it's quite a nice module if you like it it could do with the usual waterproofing it could do with the uh, wipe of grease or grease on the the battery contacts in here to protect them against corrosion it could do with perhaps uh, these solar panel leads being cropped and a little bit of resin put across if needs be or or varnish just to protect against corrosion although they're not a huge thing really. Uh, but on the top, where we've got the components exposed to the weather, ultimately it'd be a good idea to say get a clear nail varnish and just put a little pool over those just to protect them because where you get the pins close together, if water drips from inside the globe condensation, it can basically bridge pins together and cause corrosion with current flow between them. But that is it. You know, it's not bad. The globe itself gave a nice area of diffused light and um, the circuitry is typically what you might expect for one of these things, but it's quite nicely implemented. I should put that up there so when all the little usual things at the end of the video appear, you know, the here's the recommended video and subscribe to the channel type things. It doesn't block things. But that's it. Uh, it's quite a nicely made light. It's big. It's not like they're not skimpy in size. It's got a good size globe. It's just the right translucency to illuminate, but also let the light through to charge the cell by exposing the solar panel uh, panels to the sunlight. Uh, and it just seems quite well made. This module seems quite robust, although, as I say, it, it could benefit from those little additions. And if you really like the light a lot, you could basically remove this switch. The one slight downside is that uh, because uh, this, because the circuitry is not powered when there's daylight, it always reverts back to the red, uh, to the colour cycle, should I say. So every time it comes on in the evening, well, let me switch it on right now. Uh, and you cover the solar panels, oh, and I'm not going to be able to do it. It's not blocked. You see the red LED is lit. It's just going to start the color cycle. So by default, it will be color cycling until you actually open it up and press the button uh, and then screw it back together again, which is a bit odd. But uh, it's nice. It's quite nicely made and it's a good functional device.